like a model man. I had it. And put him in control. Watch him become a podcaster. Watch people's eyes roll. That's right, we are back in the new year with a new episode. And you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it, you're gonna think it's really, really good. So let's jive. See, what I did there was I... <clears throat> I did a bit of Megadeth, uh, kind of a take on that, a Megadeth song, are you, are you, do you know what that's all about? Uh, welcome, welcome, one and all, back to another edition of the of the Jive Talking with Shane Diablo podcast. It is just breaking all the boundaries. Um, it's just doing big things around here. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's, I can't thank you, I, I, I can't thank you enough, quite frankly. Um, I want to ask you guys a question and tell me if this is weird. Uh, or not. And then we're going to get into it. I was going to talk to you guys a little bit about the gesture of the hand. It's one of the oldest symbols in the world. You know, you, know, you, can, you can wave. You can wave at someone sideways or up and down or just move with the fingers or whatever, but uh, we'll get into that another time. So I, would, you know, I like to wave at work. I like to go, hey, how you doing? And uh, just this, you know, couple of incidents that I had that it just really pissed me off. But um, uh, smoking. So every time I go into this, this, uh, convenience store that's by my house, um, the, the guy was smoking outside one day and, and, uh, he says, well, you know, you, you should stop doing that. And then he's been off and on with it, but now he's back on with the smoking, right? This is one of those clerks at the convenience store, 7-Eleven. And I've caught myself at least four or five times saying, when are you going to quit smoking? You know, I'm one of those people. Hey, don't make sure, because I told him today, make sure you put on a, a jacket and a coat if you go out for a cigarette. And he looked at me and kind of went, ah, oh, you fucking guy, you. But the, the, the weird part of it is, is that I have friends that smoke and I don't say a damn word to them about it. Why am I so concerned about the guy at the 7-Eleven? Hell, I don't know. Let's get into this. I welcome you all to episode 110 of Jive Talking with Shane Diablo. We get into it, we get into it now. These are strong eyes. This is Kiku, Kiko Lurira, real. I swear, man, I could not get spit that word out if you ever, I don't know, Lurairo. I'm saying it proper then, Kiko Lurairo. This is the face of a man that has determination in it. It has deep love for a family. It has all these things. These eyes are steely. They say, I will not break, I will not bend. And, um, of course, he ended up leaving Megadeth, right? Well, interestingly enough, uh, Kiko, on his replacement in Megadeth, I thought bringing Marty Friedman back would be amazing. Now, we're only a year shy of the Rust in Peace 25-year anniversary. And he, I think he says he talked to management. He actually talked to some people about this. So I wanted to find out what was going on with Kiko Lurario on his replacement in Megadeth. I mean, just, you know, the guy says, the guy has done his duties, hasn't he, as far as Megadeth's concerned? What other guitar player quits the band, finds a replacement that's freaking awesome, and then goes and talks to management about maybe getting Marty Friedman in? This guy is getting busy. He's with it. In a new interview with Guitar World magazine, guitarist Kiko Lurairo, who announced his exit from Megadeth last September, revealed that he recommended to Dave Mustaine, the red-headed dog of rock, that he'd be formally replaced by one of his predecessors, Marty Friedman. The gig eventually went to... Fi what? I missed something. Revealed that he recommended to Dave Mustaine that he be formally replaced, okay, by Marty Friedman. He, so he went in saying, hey, the gig eventually went to Finnish guitarist Timu Montessari, who was welcomed into Megadeth last November. I thought Kiko had something to do with that. Uh, after first temporarily filling in for Lou Rairo. 
uh, who, who, who is this? Is this Kiko talking? He says, and actually, I eventually to the management and Dave that I thought bringing Marty Friedman back would be amazing. And Kiko told the guitar world, I have no idea if they're talking about it or talking to him, but I do say that. But again, I have no idea beyond that. I don't know. Want to make anything uh, more complicated. This guy is the king of uncomplications. Did you not just hear me recite the fact that he got two good, he's got one guitar player in, and then, I mean, the guy is just, you're, you've, you've completed your duties. Lou Ryro went on to say that he was hot hard. I was warmly embraced by Megadeth fans during a nine year stint with the group. The fans never said anything bad about me or complained, which was amazing. But I'm a fan, and I always understood that Marty was part of this iconic albums, The Rust in Peace. Oh, was he on count, uh, Countdown to Extinction too? Dude, you gotta get him back in the band for freaking Rust in Peace, right? And then you keep him around and not fire him until after the Countdown to Extinction. Reunion anniversary. I understood that Marty was the guy who helped create the sound and the style, you know. From the moment I joined Megadeth, I knew the fans could show me love, but I would never win their hearts over Marty. They love Marty so much. They wear the shirts and the panties, they say. I love Marty. I love him so much, but you're up there. You're okay too, Kiko. That's what they say. The 36-year-old the Montessori, who was scouted and selected by Lou Ryro for Megadeth, was born in Tampere, Finland, and began playing guitar at the age of the, the, the very young age of 12. In 2004, he joined the band Winter Sun. That sounds familiar. I mean, not only because we read it before, but uh, he, he has also been a member of Smackbound since 2015. Lou Ryro, see the practice will get me down to it where I know it. Lou Ryro officially joined Megadeth in April 2015 and five months after Chris Broderick's exit from the group. Five months after? Okay. Drink time. See, my lips get so, when I get talking so much. I get, I get, you know, it gets all sticky in there. I got to loosen it up. Plus with the, you know, the talking with the accents and stuff, that lubes you up. Last September, Friedman was asked by metal Metalhead Marv of This Day in Metal uh, what it was like to rejoin Megadeth twice on stage in the space of six months earlier that year. First, in February 2023 at Tokyo, Japan's famed Budokan, and then in earlier August 2023 at the, at the Wacken Open Air Festival in Wacken, Germany, if you didn't know. The Wacken Open Air? This is Wacken, Germany. He responded, it was wonderful. Who is this? Friedman? Oh, it was wonderful. We have a wonderful history together. So when something special like that came up, it was kind of a definite thing that I wanted to do. And we both enjoyed it immensely. And I just hope the fans enjoyed it as much as we did. For us, it was just a really nice, nice thing to do. Kind of a, just to put an exclamation point on things that we did in the history of the band. And of course, I'm the biggest fan of whatever they do in my absence. In my absence? That's interesting. That selection of words there. And just rooting them on the whole ding dong damn way. At last year's Vakken Open Air, Marty performed four songs with Megadeth: "Trust," "Tornado of Souls," "Symphony of Destruction," and "Hallelujah." The punishment is due. At Budokan, Friedman came up on stage for three songs. Is Dave already cutting him down? Don't get too high in your britches, buddy. Three songs will do you here. Uh, at Budokan, Friedman came up on stage with three songs toward the end of Megadeth's main set, Countdown to Extinction, Tornado of Souls, and Symphony of Destruction. 
after his Tokyo reunion with Megadeth, Marty told the Aquarian, he's telling everybody, and the every weekly he can find. What I think is great about Megadeth is that, that being, a, being a legacy act, there's also new kids discovering them. And then they discover you and look to see what you're doing now. So they get the experience of Marty Friedman as well. I've always been rooting for Megadeth. Don't you not think that? And they really did great. I mean, without me, they did pretty dang good. A lot of the, a lot of the things that they do in my absence led them to very, very good places. A very, very good place. And a lot because of Dave's, Dave Mustaine, he's the Dave Mustaine Megadeth leader, uh, uh, leader's efforts, and the band, and the band members' efforts. When they made it to Budokan, I was just so glad to hear that. It was a safe travel. Then they afforded me to play, and it was just the cherry on top of the goddamn big old pie. I had such a great time playing with them. It was something that fans enjoyed as much as I did. All right, we're done with that, okay? Look at that. He says, Shane, I will, don't, I will never let you down. I will never, ever let you down. I'm going to get into good bands again. And I'm going to play that music that you love to hear me play. I might go back to Angra. I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to see. Hey, you like Megadeth? Let's do another one. Real quick. I just want to braze over this and kind of get the ins and outs. But this is that Dave Ellison scandal. He's done an interview. And I'd like to uh, just kind of understand more about the situation. This is Dave Ellison on scandal that led to his le the latest exit from Megadeth. When you bear it all, you've got nothing to hide. And that's what I'm thinking he did, right? He bared it all online. Now you just, Dave, or you, Dave Ellison should have just got him in OnlyFans. You know, simple. $4.99, something like that. For Megadeth basis, David Ellison has opened up about the sex scandal that caused his latest exit from the band. Speaking to Metal Hammer magazine, he said, There's two sides to it. One, when you bear it all, you've got nothing to hide. Fuck it. Now you can truly be yourself. We all come into the world with our birthday suits on. So what are we ashamed of? I put my penis on the internet. No, they didn't say that. What I feel the worst about is the embarrassment that it caused some people, like my family, who didn't deserve it. Out of the respect for them, I'm going to keep the family dynamic off the table during interviews. That's at their request. Regarding Megadeth lead, leader Dave Mustaine's response to, uh, to the report that sexually tinged messages and explicit video footage involving... I mean, it never really surfaced, did it? I mean, not that you, you'll be happy to know I was never looking for it, but I'm just, you know, I never, you know, Twitter or whatever. Uh, let's see, tinged messages and explicit video footage involving Ellison were posted on Twitter. I guess it was there. Dave said, Dave, his manager and his lawyer called me up after the scandal. Oh, is this, uh, this isn't Dave Dave, right? Dave, his manager and his lawyer, called me up after the scandal. There was a sentiment from one of them saying, let's step back. Let Ellison deal with it. It leaves the door open for him to come back. Dave didn't want that. He made his decision and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. At the time, Ellison released a statement on Instagram denying all social media chatter that he groomed an underage fan. He also filed a report with the groomed. I say that. Groomed an underage fan. He also filed a report with the police department in Scotts. That's a good boy. Alleging unlawful uh, distribution of sexually explicit images of him by, by unknown offenders. Wasn't it the girl? I thought it was the girl he's shown his ding dong to. You know, anyone that's going to try and groom somebody, if you're in a, you're a big star, why do they do that? It's always some huge celebrity. It's like, you got the, wor the whole world in your hands. Well, I don't understand. I just don't get it. Any kind of the word grooming, really. My hair, anything. It's just grooming. is. I just don't understand that phrase. 
asked in a 2022 uh, rather dismissing Ellefson from Megadeth was difficult decision to take given the long time friendship between the two men. Mustaine replied, I have many mistakes myself, and so I know what it feels like to have people gunning for you. The key to Dave is keeping your lips, you're trying to keep your lips as close as you can. And I'm not even like a voice guy. I mean, I know, I know it seems that way, but it's like I didn't plan to be Jeff Dunham or something like that. You know? It's just a gift. It's just another one of those gifts on top of all the other gifts. Uh, but when we had to remember, yeah, but what we had to remember is that Megadeth has a lot of people, see I forget sometimes, a lot of people and moving parts. There are four band members. You've got their families, their managers, the comp managing companies, the agencies, all of the technicians on and on and on. I can tell you I've made decisions in the past that were determinal to the security of the band. And I only want harm the, the... And I know what harm that caused. Jesus Christ, sorry. But I don't want to be saying anything about anyone who is unable to defend themselves. <laughs> God, it's so hard to tap dance around this. Oh, God, this is going to keep going. Let me just say this. It was a hard decision. It was a hard decision to be made. There were a lot of people involved, and I had to make some decisions, because unfortunately, when you're the leader of the pack, you're the one that has to suck it up and face the music, which is what we do, make rock. All I wanted to do was make a clean break and not hurt anyone. Not hurt the fans. Why would I want to do that? And not hurt him. I just wanted to move on. And I hope the gentleman concerned is doing okay. Gentlemen, am I getting something mixed up here? I imagine there was some adjustment that had to take place when it happened. Was, was, um... I mean, am I just kind of lost in my own thoughts, in my own world? Was was Dave Ellison sending his ding dong to to, to a young uh, to a man? Or, or it was hard for me when I oh it was hard for me when I lost my job. Mustaine said, apparently referring to getting kicked out of Metallica. Oh, okay, in 1983, but I've forgiven him bef before when he sued me. That's right, Dave Ellison did sue him, didn't he? And I'll forgive him a thousand times. I just won't play music with him anymore. <laughs> there you have that. Guys, you're going to be so damn happy to know this. We are done with the Megadeth portion of the show. We are moving into Rage Against the Machine, yo. Shit, man. <clears throat> Anyone that didn't think we weren't funky fresh around here, you can get the funk out. You know it. You know we can get funky around here. You know we got some, we got rap rock and some Fred Durst and all that. This is very interesting. I, I, I think Zach De La Roche, if that's the way you say his name, I say it the French way. Um, they're just done. But he's never been like a big, you know, right? They toured for a while and stuff. But when they broke up, he seemed like he was done with it. He didn't go do other bands or anything, did he? Or maybe he's a DJ. I don't know. Uh, but the drummer, Brad Wilk, says, Rage Against the Machine will not be touring or playing live again. Now, there's something cryptic in this I was going to say before we get in this story. That's why I'm interested in this specifically. Uh, not to knock Rage Against the Machine. They're a good band. I like some tunes from them. They got a really good backbeat. Uh, but th there's a phrase in here that Brad Wilk says in his little post that he made or whatever. That made me think something fishy's going on. One of them, like maybe De La Roca's going off and he's going to start up a new Rage Against the Machine with three other people. There's only one way to find out. Rage Against the Machine drummer Brad Wilk says the iconic band will not play any more shows. Earlier today, Wednesday, January 3rd, the 55-year-old musician took to his Instagram to write, I know a lot of people are waiting for us to announce new tour dates for all that canceled R.A.T.M. shows. I don't want to string people around uh, or myself along any damn further. 
I know a lot of people are waiting for us to announce new tour dates for all that kept... Why is this say this again, Blabbermouth? So, so while there has been some co communication that is my that that may be happening in the future, I want to tell you now that R A T M Rage Against the Machine, Tim, Zach, Tom, and I will not be touring or playing live again. I see. What does that mean? Why do you have to name the four dudes in that? We know. These four dudes right here, I, Tom, Zach, and Tim, they're in this thing. It's called Rage Against the Machine. I'm sorry for those of you who have been waiting for this to happen. I really wish it was. This past November, Tom Morello was the sole member of Rage Against the Machine. Remember this at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? He was the only one there. This past November, Tom Morello was the sole member of Rage Against the Machine who attended the band's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York City. Brooklyn, New York City. Pioneering rapper and body count front man, Ice T inducted Morello, singer De, uh, Zach De La Roche, bassist Tim Comford, Com Comerford, and drum, drummer Brad Wilk into the Rock Hall, recalling how Rage Against the Machine opened for, uh, for him during the band's earliest days. Oh, Ice T, let him play. Oh, that is so fun. That is good. I like that. Was he doing it with Ice T or Body Count? We're going to have to DM Ice T and get to the bottom of that. Right out of the gate, Rage Against the Machine was not a game, Ice T said. In their career, I don't know. We're just going for it. I don't know how he even sounds. In their career, they did things that impressed cats like me. Dig it? You can impress me with normal stuff. You can't impress me with normal stuff. You got to impress me with the stuff like suing the U.S. State Department for using their music in Guantanamo Bay for torture. Who does that? Rage against the machete. Does. They do that. Or how about 1993 pulling up at a Lollapalooza butt naked with duct tape pro protesting against the P R P M? You got it wrong, guys. The P R M C? No, 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 no. P M R C, the Parent Music Resource Center. Who does that? Ice T's asking. Motherfucker, who does that? Rage Against the Machine does. I respect the hell out of this band. If you want to go down in history, you have to make something or break something, Ice-T continued. Rage Against the Machine broke every rule in the book just so they could let you know they were in the building. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Tom Morello said, I am deeply grateful for the music... Hey, it sounds like this. I am deeply grateful for the musical chemistry I've I've had the good fortunes to share with Brad Wilk, Tim Comerford, and Zach De La Roche. I, I also say it the uh, French way. Like most bands, we have differing perspectives on a lot of things, including about being inducted into the Rock Hall. Well, there's your answer. That's why they weren't there. The other three didn't care about it. But you gotta, someone's gotta go. You gotta do the, uh, what's that called? Bang! Scissor, paper, rock, scissor, you know? You, someone's got it, well. Swack the rock, Tom's going, you know? The reason we are here and the best way to celebrate this music is for you to carry on the message. And that message, the lessons I've learned from Rage fans, is that music can change the world daily. The 59 year old guitar rocker continued. The job we've set out to do is not over. Now you're the ones that must testify. If you've got a boss, 
Join a union. If, you've, if you're a student, I feel like I'm channeling him right now. If you're a student, start an underground paper. If you're an anarchist, throw a brick. If you're a soldier or a cop, follow your conscience, not your orders. Ooh. Follow your... Ooh. Damn, he's laying it down, isn't he? This is like a poem. If you're bummed out that you didn't get to see Rage Against the Machine, then form your own band. And let's hear what you have to say. Jesus, isn't he an inspiration? When protest music is done right, Morello added, you can hear a new world emerging in the songs. I mean, he's not wrong. These songs, they stick around, man. And, and you know, I just heard, I, my, uh, my friend was telling me his son is like 15, 14, 15 years old now. 13, 14, 15. He's like, yeah, his favorite band's the Deftones. Music, it just lasts. If it's good, it's good. When it was first announced that Rage Against the Machine was being inducted into the Rock Hall back in May of 2023, the band members shared a lengthy statement thanking the institution for the in induction and recounting the long, radical journey that led up to the honor. In 1991, four people in Los Angeles formed a music group to stand where so sound and, and a solidarity intersect. We are grateful to all of the passionate fans, the many talented co-conspirators we've worked with, with all this, the, the activists, organizers, re rebels, revolutionary and revolutionaries past, present, and future who have inspired our art. These guys are freaking poets. Rage Against the Machines Rock Hall introduction came after the band appeared on Six Bollocks. In October 2022, uh, Rage Against the Machine canceled its North American tour three months after De La Roche suffered his left Achilles tendon, leaving a mere eight inch of the tendon intact. That's not good. You gotta take care of your legs, especially when you get older. Rage Against the Machines Comeback Tour, which was first announced in 2019 and then delayed several times due to the pandemic, marked uh, the first time the reunited rap metal quartet had hit the road together since 2011. In late 2022, Comerford revealed that he has been living with prostate cancer. Oh, let's not go down this road, please. Okay, we're done. We're done with that. Let's get into something reunited and it... Oh, no. We got Wolfgang here. No, that's not Bigfoot holding my sugar records. That's, that's freaking Wolfgang Van Halen. And I just wanted to see, hear a little bit of this. He's a, he's a Meshuggah fan. We've talked about it before. Uh, the reason why I kind of goof there, you're like, whoa, he went off his script or whatever that he's, you know, like he's kind of off rhythm there, off beat, off tick there. It's because I had another story that I was going to do about the reunited of uh, Anthony, uh, what's his name? The bass player for Van Halen, Michael Anthony. I was going to say Timothy Anthony. And we're not doing that story. We're doing this. He loves Meshuga. We're going to find out why. Wolfgang, and maybe we'll just, no, we won't watch the video. Wolfgang is uh, featured in Amoeba's What's in My Bag. Have you seen those on YouTube? It's called What's in My Bag, and they have, like, different people pick records. He's a Meshuggah head, this guy. He's a Meshuggah. Uh, What's in My Bag segment in which the mammoth WVH frontman talks about some of the record, uh, records he is into. The first LP he picked was Immutable. The latest effort from Swedish extreme tech metal pioneers, Meshuggah. He said about it, as transcribed by Blabbermouth, Meshuggah man, you my Meshuggah man, is my favorite. It's funny. There, there's, there were, were, was a, a story that came out where it quoted me as saying, like, Meshuggah puts me to sleep. And that was taken out of context. I said, I can fall asleep listening to Meshuggah, which is a compliment because it relaxes me. It brings me peace. It brings me zen. 
as a drummer first, I tend, I tend to intake music in a more rhythmic manner. He's like me. That's the way I do it. I take in the bass and the, and the, and the drums, and then I start to let my body go, and I let my mind go. And then I start to hear that keyboard in the background. And then I start to hear, and you hear that guitar come in. But it always starts with the bass and the drum. The boom, bah, the backbone. They call it the back backbone. Um, I'm all about rhythm. I like rhythm. And Meshuggah is rhythm. It's like dinosaurs fighting. The former Van Halen bassist named 2002's Nothing as probably my favorite Meshuggah album. It's where they really started getting sort of groovy and sludgy with their sound, he said. A lot of people like the, the one before 1998's Chaos Sphere, an amazing album too. Don't get me wrong about that. It's more thrashy, but I really like the groovy sort of sludgy aspect. And this one, Nothing is all sludge and groove. All right. Is he going to just keep rattling this shit off? Uh, let's, a uh, little bit more, if you don't mind. Because we want to go, I got a quick video. We're going to watch Phil Anselmo in some kind of a haunted house. And it's just a warning. There's a big buzz saw because there's a, a, someone with a chainsaw that's literally two inches away from him. And he doesn't seem to mind at all. Uh, when Wolfgang, the 32-year-old son of Van Halen legend Eddie Van Halen, married his fiance Andre, and we wished him the best, if you remember. On one of these episodes, we wish them the very best. His fiance Andrea Alsop, last October at their home in Los Angeles, the wedding playlist included... You were never going to fucking guess. Meshuggah. He says, Shugga, I'm going to have me a little shit Meshuggah on. Hey, when you're Wolfgang the Mammoth Van Halen, you, no one tells you no. You think Valerie Bertinelli's going to tell him no? Fuck that. They're a very progressive metal band. This is Wolf. He's explaining it to his, his he be betrothed, his beloved. They're a very progressive band here. I think to anybody, to the non-informed crowd, though, it would probably just sound like death metal, honey. Dear, sweet my sweet peas. Anyone over 40 will be terrified. But you know what? It's my wedding, dear. It's my wedding eve, in fact. And I'll do whatever I want. With your permission, of course, dear. In July 2023, Wolfgang told Primordial Radio about his love for Meshuga. Hmm. He says, I could fall asleep listening to Meshuga. It relaxes me so much. See, that was the quote he was talking about when he says, I think I did. someone quoted me as saying that. It's right there for us to read. If you're familiar with Meshuggah, you'll probably know the song Bleed. Meshuggah is just one of my favorite bands. They are unbelievably heavy. There's nothing heavier than them. Even my baby sweet honey pit baby cakes I to, we ha, that we listened to them on my wedding night. I think she's a fan now. But you get lulled into the rhythm. As the drummer, as a drummer first, and I, I've, I will say this, as a drummer first, I just am in love with the rhythmic music. And there's nothing more rhythmic than Meshuga. Paul Meshuga on me in the name of love. Come on, you knew that had to happen. You know that had to happen. Here's, see, here, there, here's, here's Phil, Phil Anselmo. This is an axe or a chainsaw wielding gal in a dress, and he, she's lunging right at him, and he's like, "Hey, walk on home, boy." So, just a warning: it's going to be buzz saw, saw loud. I just wanted to see if he was going to tell her to fuck off or what. And he clapped, didn't he? Just clap at her, like that was good. He knows about haunted houses and stuff. He makes one every year. Why are you so late? I tell you, you be late for your own music. I mean, I could see like someone jumping out and going, holy fuck, that's fucking Phil Anselmo. You lose your character. The thing is, is Phil Anselmo, he, he does his own haunted house every year. So he doesn't go into haunted houses, oh, you're going to fucking scare me? 
Is that what you think you're gonna fucking do, guy? You're gonna fucking scare me? He doesn't go in doing that. He's looking around for goodies, ideas. Or, and the way he's chewing the gum in this clip, we'll keep watching, but the way he's chewing the gum in this clip, he's going, nah, there's nothing. I'm ready to walk on out of here. Is he going to say he loves it? You're pretty good. That is fantastic. God, that was great. He just rolls his eyes and turns his head. I'm loving this. Guys, am I loving this or what? That is fantastic. Sounds like he's like, you so he should have said, you sound like my ex-wife. Man. Plunging out of a window frame. Oh, he clap. He like that. He likes that, guys. He likes that. Let's get into your comments. It is time for comments, man. It's the first comments of the new year. How will we do? What will we do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. I'm going to have a big old chug off my, my drink here, my mango. Then we're going to get into your comments. We got Ed here. Ed's popping off the top. Mm. All right, Ed, come at me. Give it to me. Give it to me good. Shane, have a good 2024. My God. Thank you, Ed. What a great, what a, what a really nice thing to say to somebody. I appreciate that. Thank you. Did you ever heard about podcasts like Three Sides of the Coin? Yes. Kiss Fact Podcast, Almost Human 56, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Fuck. Kiss Army, We Are One, and uh, Brant with uh, In My Head. I wonder if you guys know and talk with each other. I don't talk to any of them. I do know Brant's channel. Yes, Brant, in my head, in my head. Uh, I know the three sides of the coin. I've never listened to it, because, but I know it's like, uh, I want to say we are one, and uh, this one, three sides of the coin, is kind of like the official ones, isn't it? I've never listened to any of them. I have seen uh, Brant's stuff. Quite a few of his videos, um, mainly as Ki I mean, he does. He loves Kiss. He does a lot of goddamn Kiss. Uh, but it was those uh, lip sync videos that popped off and and turned me on to him. But there you go. Just curious. He says he was just curious. So there you go, there, Ed. Uh, we got Mike Buchanan. Mike Buchanan back at it once again. Hope everyone had a great holiday season and welcome to 2024. Another great year for metal. On this week's movies that are bad, but we love them anyways, The Velocity Pastor. Oh! And yes, it's, a, it's as deliciously bad as it sounds. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China, where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. Although he is horrified by the new power, a sex worker convinces... I'm watching it. As soon as you say that, I gotta watch it. A sex worker convinces him to use it to fight crime. Bad dialogue, check. Bad special effects, check. Equally bad uh, equals bad B movie. I truly haven't enjoyed a B movie like this one in some time. It's all. It's all. Oh, is he gonna say something? It's almost like. Oh, I thought he was gonna say it's almost as good as Sharknado. Oh, and there's a sequel. That's what. Oh, okay. The Velosa Pastor Two. I uh, still might be canon here. I mean, I do like Bush. Well, not sure as to why Joey needs to bash the Bush era of Anthrax. Uh, I was totally. Yeah, I see what you're doing here, Mister. Oh ho ho! What that guy say? Uh, I'm not going to do the accent. But if you remember in um, Revenge of the Nerds, Hair Pie, I, okay, anyways, Jesus, what do you, stop it. Um, I mean, I do like Bush. Well, not sure as to why Joey needs to bash the Bush era of Anthrax. There were many good songs that came from the Bush time. Sound of White Noise is a fantastic album. I think we got to do some of them on the first listens. 
Never have been a big fan of ghosts, so there's that. Beep, 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 boop. Sorry, Bruce, but the first song off of your solo album sounds like it could fit into any Iron Maiden album. Hopefully the, oh, hopefully the rest of the album uh, is different than what the main band does. Isn't that the reason why you would do a solo album 100%? To be different. Yeah. You don't leave ACDC as Brian Johnson and then go do a band that sounds just like Brian Johnson. I know that was the worst um, comparison I could have ever given, for sure, Brian Johnson. But th the point is, is if you're going to do something, do something that's a little different. Look at Corey Taylor. He does all that rowdy shit where he's going... And then he goes and does his Corey Taylor stuff. Where he sings beautifully, Stone Sour, he sings beautifully. Uh, let's see. Um, nobody gets any money from Spotify or really any streaming service. Are ghosts real? Question mark. Who knows? Part of me wants them to be real, but then part of me is like, eh, or is that ah? Because you're scared, or you're like, eh. I, however, did spend the night on Alcatraz, and it was freaky. Best way to see the island, I must say. I, one, of, one time, one of my old bands, not, not Don Monster Die, but uh, we, were, we were doing a West Coast tour, and we stopped in San Francisco, and it was a blast and just amazing, and we were on the wharf and all that. I wanted to do that Alcatraz tour, and to do the, spoo the sp you know, the freaky one would be fantastic. The paranormal or state go at night. Anytime I get even next to a prison, and sometimes for my work I have to go into the prison, uh, it's just the, f I just go, never will I ever. I would be eaten alive in prison. Do you understand what I'm telling me, what I'm telling you? And now, your jive-talking Mike Buchanan jokes of the week. 99.9% .9 of people are dumb. Fortunately, I belong to the 1% of smart people. I think my phone is broken. I press the home button, and I'm still at work. That's pretty good. There is a special species of bird that is really good at holding stuff together. They are called Velcros. Oh. And finally, I had a Nirvana joke, but I forgot it. Oh, well, whatever. Never mind. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Too soon, he says? Question mark. Too soon. Yeah, how long's uh, Kurt Cobain been gone now? You know, and he, and he, and he died on the fateful um, 27, the, the birthing. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain, you know, the dreaded 27, they call it. Dan coming in here. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Oh, did I, I almost walked off without giving you your heart, Mike. Uh, Dan says, somehow I stumbled on this channel because I was trying to find out who uh, Zero is, Zeon is from Static Zero is from Static X. All right, goddammit. So, yeah, so Dan's with me. He's with me. I put up that video on, it's, you know, and you got to bear in mind when I put the video up about is it, who is the singer of Static X or whatever, uh, I, you know, it was a long time ago, but I still get people now that post on it going, hey, you dumb son of a bitch, everybody knows. It's like, I know the video's old now. Now we know. Anyways. Uh, because I was trying to find uh, Zero is who Zero is from Static X. Dude had me rolling on the personality and comedy. Take my sub, sir. You're giving me your subscri subscription? You're subscribing to my channel. Is that what you're telling me? The shit you say cracks me up. Man, oh man, you're getting a heart. And by God, you know what? If you've subscribed, bang. Get the thumb, guys. Dan just got the thumb. Who's this? Mo, uh, we're going to say Mop. Mopar? How does one get a hold of Shane? Right here, baby. 
I have the I have the badass first. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh Mopa. I have the badass first listen of his dreams. Vader, when darkness calls. Now, I'm going to put that in my mental calculator. But I can't guarantee, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you heartless here. Because, in the Jive Talking episodes, we do not put comment, we do put, not put requests. You can put them in every other video of mine that you will ever see, and if I see them, we will do them. But not here. Mopar, get back to me on that. I did listen to, I have not heard When Darkness Calls I, that, that I can think of. But uh, what was that Solitude record that they put out? I thought that whole damn thing was just abominably good. Indubitably good. Miss Althea coming in here. She's got stuff to say. The Dumbstruck Fool says, Opening theme and subsequent rant, your remix of Lionel Richie's All Night Long was probably the only thing that could have saved that song for me. One of the one of my least favorite hits of the 80s. Oh yes, and I think we've talked about that, that you are not a fan of that. What about uh, Dancing on the Ceiling? What about... Um, I mean, that we're talking same era, same kind of style, but uh, what was his name? Get out of my dreams. Or is that the song? Now I'm starting to think that was the song that you also hated. Losing it. One of my least favorite hits of the 80s. And go ahead and vent all you want. We are your emotional support subscribers, darling. The guy on the bus was either a very depressed, uh, desperate attention seeker, or he was legitimately developmentally disabled. Thank you. That's the thing. That's the phrase. Developmentally. It's a hard word to say. Developmentally disabled. Uh, one politically correct term that I think was escaping you. Yes. Maybe a little of both. Yes. 100%. Um... I just wasn't, it was just weird because there was just nothing. And I'll tell you something right now. I got mad love for the autistic community. I will tell you, I have watched Love on the Spectrum in Australia and uh, United States over and over and over again. They are just fantastic characters. I absolutely love them. Uh, but he, I just wasn't getting anything from them. Now, that's not to say since I watched all Love on a Spectrum and all that, that I'm, I know what I'm talking about in that field. But I'm saying in, the, in a bus scenario, when you're riding down the road with someone, I'm looking at this guy, I'm saying it looks like Tom Segura wearing a vampire cape, holding a Pokemon doll, looking at his phone, chewing on his thumb, and keep asking me about the bus, saying that uh, he needs to get Pokemon cards. I was just saying, I was thinking to myself, this guy's straight. He, he's he's his, he's all there. He's just he's, he's got a goof on me. He's doing a goof. He just didn't need to say it four times. That's the point. Uh, Miss Althea on Joey Belladonna. I don't really remember anything from the John Bush era of Anthrax. So, to that end, I guess I would have to agree with him. And I think you should coin the term vindictive. I know, man. Right? Uh, you know, uh, didn't Gene Simmons just try to get some a copyright on a word again? I want to say I saw something about that. Any hoots, uh, uh, vindictive, if we could get like a copyright on it. And as I say, copyright on vindictive, someone is literally getting it done. And vindictive.com, is that something? We could have a whole thing here. Miss Althea on Bruce Dickinson. The photo with the story looked like an ad for Fabletics Activewear. Fable. Feeble. Fa Fabletics Activewear. Between that and his man bun project, I am expecting him to collaborate with, the Kate, with, with Kate Hudson on a fashion line any day now. Who's Kate Hudson? Is that I'm, I, I'm losing it on that. Get back to me with that. Is that... Uh, Blondie, uh, something, uh, Kurt Russell's um, uh, daughter. Uh, Miss Althea on D. Snyder. I agreed with him in part, but did he really have to say he, 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 he Mr. Eck, should be taken out and shot? No, he didn't need to say that. 
That was a little harsh, and hell yeah to welcome back Cotter. She knows. I own the entire series on DVD. She knows. R.I.P. Robert uh, Hagus Epstein. Oh, Epstein's gone? Ron Pal Palilio. Horshack. <laughs> He's gone. Ah, oh, she's got them all here. We got to get a bugle out. Marcia Strassman. Julie, a.k.a. Mrs. Cotter. I had a crush on her, kind of. Her and that, not the not the uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, but not the, ble the, the, the bleach blonde one. The other one that had the glasses. I had, oh, I had a crush on them. Um, I own the entire, let's see. Oh, who we Mrs. Cotter and John Sylvester, Mr. White, uh, John Sylvester White, Mr. Woodman. Yes, I think I just saw a little video of him the other day. Miss Althea on Megadeth. I've never seen Paranormal Prison, but I am definitely going to check it out. At the same time, though, it's kind of like a prison haunted, really? Just like that show Haunted Hospitals? Come on, man. Prisons and hospitals will always be haunted by default. I agree with that. And every one of those episodes that you see, they go, well, not only is it a mental hospital where thousands of people die, but it's also on an old Indian burial ground. So there's thousands of bodies, you know, it's just, and on top of that, it's all limestone. Limestone is a, is a rock a mineral. Well, we, we don't call them rocks, we call them minerals. Uh, but uh, it conducts very good energy, and it's very good for ghosts. That kind of stuff, you know. Uh, Miss Althea, regarding the pronunciation of, okay, nampa, or whatever, the, the, the word. The Japanese word for cheers is kanpai. Kanpai. Oh, I guess, yeah, I can see it now. P-A-I, pai, pai, yeah, kanpai. The Everly Brothers, one of my favorites from the 1950s. Yes, Wake Up Little Susie was their song. Okay, I'm great. Uh, uh, you should also know Kathy's Clown. Oh, yes. Boy, I sure wish I could ring up a couple bars that. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye, happiness. And all I have to do is dream. Is that dream, 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 dream? Is that it? Miss Althea, get back to me on that. There you go. There's your heart, Miss Althea. Wonderful, wonderful. And jolly Jake Lavelle coming in. This is a grief-free zone. I agree with that, unless it's my grief. Anything goes on my side, but I agree. This should be a this 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 podcast should be the relaxation zone. Free yourself of all anxieties. Breathe deep. You know, it should be the place to go. I need some peace. And sanguine coming in here again. Where's the jive? I need the jive. Give me the jive. Here it comes. Bang! There's the heart for you. All right, you guys. Fantastic, fantastic. As always, just a wonderful time hanging out with you. This is, this is mental health for me. When I do this podcast, I can just do what I do every day, talk to myself. But I know that I'm talking to all of you. And that's what makes it even that much better. Um, because you're really fine folks. I'm finding out that you guys are really fine folks out there. I thought I was the only one, but I'm not. So let's get into it. Let's just try it. I just... Mm. I need some, I mean, yeah, let's, let's, let's groove it, man. Let's get freaking groovy. Get 
get up, get down, come on around and get up, get down. Have a little fun, grab a little fun, get a little fun. Come on, honey. Yeah. Let's jive talk, let's have a good time jive talk Talking about news, talking about fun, talking about life, talking about love Talking about headache, talking about a good time, talking about everything you want to talk about it Jive talking, honey baby, jock and jive Get it up, get it up, get it up, get it up, good motherfucker, baby, baby, let's drive.